And welcome back to the Outdoors and Zart Radio Show on WRVO Radio. I'm out here in the outdoors with Dean Colson, my co-host, and we do this radio show in the outdoors, making this show the real outdoor radio show. We want you to get that full effect of the outdoors. Now with us today, we have Jeff Martin. Jeff Martin is a founder of Primitive Lifeways. And so, Jeff, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hey, boy, Jeff. Thanks for having me. So... I'm the founder and operator of Primitive Lifeways, and I also have a YouTube channel. You can just type in Primitive Lifeways channel in Google, and it'll come up. Um, so I used to live in California in the Mojave Desert, and I grew up uh, basically learning the land and, and learning from my grandmother, and it just kind of evolved deeper into the primitive skills, and I think now more than ever before, it's important to keep the past alive and get back to our natural roots, and that is primitive skills. Uh, I teach classes. I teach classes up here in Arizona, so I did move a couple years back, and we just like to share and, and keep the knowledge alive. I definitely agree with you, Jeff. Uh, I think more now than ever, we need these skills. Uh, just, I mean, just looking at the economy and stuff, it's just something that we all need to know. And so, Jeff, I, I do appreciate you coming on the show. And uh, so, Dean, you have a question for him? Yeah, so, Jeff, what was it like to run a survival school? So just, I don't know if that's more, like, about, like, the desert area that you're you're in, or is it about other areas, you know, throughout the throughout well, yeah, so go ahead, try and explain that if you could. Yeah, well, we, we don't really run a, a survival school, so to say. We run workshops, and our goal, again, is, is keeping the past alive and to really tap into our early ancestry. And as we run, you know, multiple-day workshops, teaching various skills, everything from bow-making to arrow-making to atlatls and darts, Primitive pottery, basket weaving, uh, plant identification and uses. More, more like Just bushcraft. A of different I'm more, sorry. More bushcraft. I guess is yeah, we, we do we do teach some bushcraft. We we'll teach spoon carving, uh, traps and deads, all snares. But we don't we don't really again we don't really get into the survival aspect of. Uh, like like a lot of schools do, we 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 focus primarily on the skill aspect. That's cool, Jeff. Now, like, you go to a school, uh, you can apply these skills to make them survival. But uh, I guess it's more primitive skills and bushcraft skills. For the uh, people who are listening, uh, if you don't know what bushcraft is, bushcraft is uh, it's self-explanatory. Bush means woods, and so it, it's craft that you that you make from the woods. And so whether that's making a trap, making a spoon, making a spear, you make stuff that you find in the woods. And so that's what bushcraft really is. And it's often used in survival. Uh, Dave Canterbury came on the show a few weeks ago, and he wrote a book called Bushcraft 101. He talked about how to different uh, bushcraft skills that you can use in the survival uh, situation. So, um, Jeff, um, now I got a question for you. We ask this to every survivalist that has come on the show, uh, every person who enjoys the outdoors uh, that we've had so far. So, Jeff, what what are five essential pieces of survival gear, primitive uh, pieces of gear, that you would use in a survival situation? Well, I, I always say that, you know, it depends on the environment. I don't follow any five-piece kit or ten-piece kit rule. I always say, again, it just depends on where you're located. And when I think of wilderness survival, I think of someone who's in a bad situation, think things went wrong. And your number one goal is to find rescue above anything else. So I would recommend a spot device, a signaling mirror, and a whistle. That would be my core pieces of kit. And then from there, you can figure out your other priorities. And in the desert, water is your number your number two priority right behind rescue. Okay. So, uh, Jeff, sorry, what, go ahead. Yeah, what, what is a, a what did you say, a spot piece? A spot kit? A, a spot device. A spot a, device. A, a spot device. Yeah, you can find them at REI. Okay. And... It's a GPS tracking system. If, if you find yourself in an emergency, uh, the GP, depending on the plan you subscribe to, they can uh, they can track your movement. And if you need rescue, there's a there's an SOS button you hit, and and search and rescue is notified, and they come to help you out. 
Okay. It has a very high success rate as well. Uh, a lot of, a lot, you know, a lot of. I want to say a lot of folks will, especially in the bushcraft and, and survival community, they'll they'll discount this device. But if you look at their success rate, it's very very high. There's there's lots and lots of people that get rescued. Yeah, it sounds like a very uh, useful tool to have in survival situations. Sounds like I mean, it's right. an awesome piece. Uh, what you just told us sounds like an awesome piece. Uh, that you would have in a survival situation, it, it could definitely uh, rescue uh, yourself from the wilderness. Now, um, Jeff, you and me have talked before, and uh, on, on your uh, website even says this, uh, you filmed with National Geographic. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, sure. So so before I go there, I, I do kind of want to touch base on what, what I mentioned about water. Water is extremely important in the desert, and... When I'm exploring lands, I, I focus on water. So I have a camelback, I have uh, I have that full, of course, I have a cool cloth, and I have a filtering system. But as far as National Geographic, um, yeah, it was back in it was back in 2011 we filmed, and I basically took a person out in the field and I showed her how to use primitive technology. So everything from acorn processing to making bows and arrows to setting up traps and shelter. And uh, that was the premise of the show, just kind of sharing skills and, and passing it on. That's really neat, Jeff, and uh, I'm glad to, again, I'm glad to have you on the show. Thanks for sharing some of your skills with us. And now, Dean, you had another question for him? Yeah, so you talked about, you know, you grew up in, I guess, California and you in the Mojave Desert area. Um, so, if you didn't have a, a camelback, platypus, or what, whatever, with with water, and you're in the desert, is there a way to collect water? Is there any way that any skills you've come across to try to collect water to to survive? Yes, absolutely. So I always say, if if you don't have the means to disinfect water, you find yourself lost. Drink it. Drink it straight from the source. It's it's better to be found alive and sick and hydrated than dead from dehydration. So drink it straight from the source if you don't. If you went out there completely unprepared, it's important to consume water. That's so, a good point. Uh, right from the puddle, yeah. Yeah, you often see that. A lot of the times, a lot of the times out in the Mojave Desert and where I'm at right now in Arizona, uh, you, your, water, your water is from monsoon collection. So you'll find little pockets and pools and and little cracks and crevices that are that are filled with water. That's a good point, Jeff. You know what? You'll see on the internet and uh, survival books and stuff like that. You'll see that say, "Hey, don't drink water unless it's disinfected." And no, I agree with that. I don't. I agree with you. I don't necessarily agree with the book or article I read because. I'm in the woods, I'm dying of thirst, uh, I've been living on without water for two days, I'm delusional, I'm a little woohoo in the head, and uh, the only thing I find is water from a pond, but I don't have any means of uh, filtering or uh, just killing all the bacteria in there, and so uh, should I just sit around and die? No, I, I should drink it uh, as is, and uh, that might even, that, I mean, how can I get worse than what I already am? And so, uh, like you said, I'd rather be found alive but sick uh, from the, a virus or something, from a, just, a, just bacteria in my body, than uh, being found dead and decomposed in the middle of nowhere. And so I definitely agree with and, that. Yeah, uh, and that, that is if you get sick. I mean, there a lot of the times when, when we're talking monsoon collections, it... it Generally speaking, uh, I mean, there, there are there are certain cases, but generally speaking, if you drink it, you know, the, the likeliness of you getting sick is pretty slim. Definitely. But again, there are those cases where, where folks will get what, sick. What the so modern man I always recommend disinfecting. What the modern man realize, doesn't realize is that we are more bacteria resistant than you actually think. Because back then, we didn't have no soaps. We didn't have no uh, way to filter water besides to boil it. And uh, we survived back then. In fact, we lived longer. We didn't have all that cancer and tumors and stuff back then. And so what the modern man used to realize is that bacteria is not quite as harmful as it always is, as you hear on the news and stuff. I mean, the chances of you getting a secret virus from one mosquito is pretty slim, especially here in America. But um, people are like, oh, no, I can't drink the water. There's junk in it. I mean, if you're dying, 
drink it. I mean, you're going to get no worse than that. And so uh, it, it, it just yeah. might just increase your chance of survival. As in the human body, can it's unbelievable how God created us and the white blood cells that run through us that kill bacteria. We, we are way more uh, powerful than we think. But we have be become accustomed to modern conveniences such as plumbing and electricity that we're scared just to go outside because we're scared to get a little bug bite. You know, my, some of my family members are that way. And so uh, the human body is more powerful than you actually think. Uh, we can withstand bacteria quite well. We don't need a little hand wipe in our pocket to wipe down the toilet seat. We're going to be okay. But, um, uh, Jeff, uh, had to cut this off, man, but uh, we do have a first commercial break, man. And guys, uh, tune in after these few messages. Are you one of the millions of Americans that carry a multi-tool or Swiss Army knife? These products are so popular because they combine life's most useful tools into one portable product. Well, now there's a new multi-tool, but for lighting. The Mule Light V2 gives you multiple functions and unprecedented run times in one sleek, durable, compact flashlight. So don't wait. The V2 is in high demand. Reserve the world's most innovative flashlight today. Go to MuleLight.com for more information. Hey guys, Blake Gallick here. I'm the host of the Outdoorsman's Art Radio Show. And I don't know about you, but I love free stuff. Mm -hmm. That being said, we are doing a giveaway. If you like your show's Facebook page, The Outdoorsman's Art, you can get a free 4-ounce bottle of deer scent. Also, if you like my own personal Facebook page, Blake Alma, you could also get a free 4-ounce bottle of deer scent. So go online, look us up on Facebook, and simply hit that like button, and you could end up having a successful hunting season with these amazing deer scents. These deer scents are provided by Mastin Deer Scents. Visit their website at www.mastindeersense.com. Hi, I'm Brian May, founder of Cincy Fisher Baits in Cincinnati, Ohio, serving the needs of bass fishermen in the Midwest and across America. We sell the highest quality baits at reasonable prices for the recreational and tournament bass fishermen. We use premium components like Mustad hooks and Worth ball bearing swivels. We sell most kinds of bass baits, including various jigs like football head, swim jigs, underspins, swing heads, med rigs, tube jigs, and more. We sell lots of spinner baits also, including a special uh, finesse spinner bait that excels on highly pressured waters like the Ohio River. You can reach us any time of the day online at cincyfisher.com. That's C I N C Y F I S H T R.com. We wish you the best of luck fishing and we hope to hear from you soon. Hey guys, welcome back to the Outdoors and Zart Radio Show, uh, part two here. And so we're out here in the outdoors. I'm out here with Dean Colson. And on the line, we have Jeff Martin. Uh, Jeff Martin, uh, myself, and Dean were just talking about uh, water filtering and how to collect water in a survival situation. And so, Jeff, um, I have a survival bag, I have a bug out bag, whatever I have with me. Uh, what would I want to have in my bug out bag or in my pocket or over my neck or wherever, whatever, how I want to carry it? Um, what would I want to have to distill water? So, as, as far as securing water in the desert, I carry a, uh, I, I personally carry a life straw a filtering device. A Sawyer Mini will work as well. They're, they're really nice devices and I just drink straight from the source and they, they work pretty well. Yeah, in our first podcast, Jeff, um, me and uh, Adam, we were talking about um, we were talking about uh, the life straw and how I mean, it's an awesome filter. It kills 99.9% .9 filter. It's a 0 0.2 micron filter. Uh, it's super small, super lightweight. You carry it around your neck. I put it in your pocket. And it can uh, filter up to 1,000 liters, and that's really helpful. And so you can drink it straight from the source. Uh, you guys can buy that on Amazon.com, or you can buy it from straight from their website and stuff. It's a really great product, guys. I would really recommend that, especially in a survival situation. It's definitely something you want to have. And uh, so, Jeff, um, again, I do appreciate you coming on the show. And Dean has a question for you here. So, Jeff, you mentioned, you mentioned you know, one of the first things you want to do is from... You know, in a survival situation out there in the desert, if you're, uh, you know, one, you know, looking to be rescued, you know, what is, you know, and then trying to, you know, find water. Um, is there ever a time that you would try to start searching for food? And if you did, what is like your your go-to primitive hunting tool, you know, to, to try to search for that food? Sure. So short-term, no, absolutely not. If someone's in a short-term 
you know, situation, food, food is your, your last option, especially if you have the rescue devices that, that I was talking about, the spot devices, the signaling mirror and the whistle. You have enough reserves to keep yourself alive for quite some time. But in a more long-term wilderness living primitive situation, absolutely food is important. It's, it's what we need. We need food. We need water. It's just our basic life necessity. So I like deadfall traps. Deadfall traps, and they, they work very well out here. The pipe deadfall is extremely effective, but also, you know, hunting, um, active hunting with an atlow or a dart or a bow and arrow system. So, you know, I make bows, I make arrows, and I have been hunting, and um, they work well. Now, they you, work well. You sell some weapons on your site, right? Um, no, I don't, I don't sell them. They take far too long to make. Uh, I mean, a sinew back bow can take six to eight months to make, uh, depending on the season and the climate you're in. Oh, wow. Uh, and the humidity, and the humidity level. So I just like to bake them. I have fun with them. I go hunting with them. I use them for target practice and they're fast. You know, a lot of folks will resort to compound bows and, and, Especially in modern society, they think they need something like that, but a wooden bow will, will absolutely be devastating, and if it's built right and it has a it has a nice tiller, meaning the bend in the wood, it, it, it will last a long time, and it'll take down just about anything in North America. Hey, Jeff, so I was going to ask you a question. Um, do you have a, like a favorite survival skill that you practice all the time? Like, like your, you know, what, what's, what do you like the most? Yeah, well, I, I practice I practice primitive skills predominantly. And my favorite primitive skill is bow and arrow making, for sure. It really humbles you, it challenges you, and every single piece of wood is different. So you have to really understand the wood you're working with. You have to listen to it. You have to listen to the environment. And it's just, it's a really fun skill. I mean, every bow comes out different. Every bow shoots a little bit different. And, uh, and yeah, it's, um, one of my favorite skills is to make bows and arrows. And I, I do replicate the bows and arrows from different plains, tribes, different California tribes, uh, southwestern tribes, east coast tribes, so forth and so on. I enjoy doing their replications, oh, for that's, sure. That's great. So with, with the wooden bow, I mean, I assume there's a, a lot more skill involved than a modern bow. I mean, as far as being steady with it and and firing it, is there any tips that you would have for us on that? Yeah, it depends on the on the bow you're making. I like to I like to kind of dip back into, into more traditional times, and especially with some of the Plains Indians, they, they would rely upon instinctive shooting. And some of these shorter bows that I make, 43-inch bows that are sinew-backed and reflexed, I like to rely upon my instinct, and I don't hold the bow, you know, with, with a wooden bow, you don't want to hold it like a, like a, a compound bow, you just, you, you want to pull it back and you want to release it, and it's, uh, you know, the more you practice, the better you'll get, even with instinctive shooting. Definitely, uh, deer season's coming up, and so I'm glad you brought that up, Dean. And uh, most of us hunters are really looking forward to that. So right now we're talking about food a little bit. So I had a question that just came to my mind. Uh, Jeff, wh you're in the desert, uh, essentially. And uh, what what fruits and vegetables do you find that you can eat there in the desert down in Arizona? Oh, great question. So there's a massive variety of, of food and medicines out here. Um, everything from pinyon nuts to acorns, mesquite pods. Uh, Rustrilla vada berries, raspberries, blackberries, wild grapes, cattails. Um, agave is one of my favorites. Right now I've been collecting a lot of purslane. That's growing quite abundant around this time of the year. And, uh, yeah, you just have, I mean, it depends on the, on the region you're in, but there is a, a massive variety of food out here. Just a massive variety. That's really neat. I did not know that. And uh, you, you said acorns there, and now acorns uh, don't they have tannins in them, and that makes it real bitter? Uh, is there a way to get yeah, the, uh, get that bitterness out of there? 
Yeah, most do. Most most contain tannic acid. The nice thing about acorns is they also contain sap carbohydrates and protein. So I put that into uh, almost like what we would call a superfood. They'll really keep you going. But yeah, they do have tannins, so you got to leach them. You have to leach your flour, otherwise they can upset your stomach. Yeah, I was wondering about that because we have uh, acorns here, and what I what I've done before. Uh, I've heard that you can boil them. I've never done that, but the really hard way to um, to get get that crap out of there is to uh, stick them in like your t-shirt, your sock, your undies, or whatever your whatever clothing you got. And I mean, if you're in a survival situation, you're desperate, so nobody really cares uh, what what you're wearing. But um, so you stick you stick that in a running uh, lake, uh, not a lake, uh, a creek or a river. Of course, in the desert, that's pretty rare. But uh, you you can stick that in there and let the water run through those acorns after you crack them for countless hours. And uh, I heard that gets the flavor out. And I've actually I think I've done that before. And uh, it, t- it tastes quite good, actually. It's uh, it's a good food to have in the survival situation. And uh, that's, I, that's... I do it a little bit different, but yeah. Well, why don't you tell us how you I... do it? Sure. So what I do is I'll, I'll gather the acorn when they fall off the tree and when they're brown. I'll crack it open and I'll pound it down in, in a mortar and pestle. Um, and then from there, I'll put it I'll line it with either a vegetable material or a piece of cotton. I'll put the flour into another basket and I'll start pouring water on top of it and I'll just slowly leach those tannins out. And as I'm leaching it, I'm constantly tasting it. I'm tasting the raw acorn and as soon the, the raw acorn flour, excuse me. And as soon as it loses its bitter flavor, I'll then proceed to cooking it into a bread. Okay, that's really neat. I, I, I've oh, never heard of that. Okay. That's not something I thought of. But that, thanks for sharing that, uh, Jeff. And I thank you for coming on the show today. Uh, thanks for sharing us with your knowledge uh, in the primitive and survival uh, world. And we definitely need it, man. And I appreciate you coming on the show. Now, before we let you go, uh, Jeff, tell us where we can find your survival school at. Uh, at. Sure. So, I'll first of all mention my YouTube channel. Search Primitive Lifeways channel. And you can search in the YouTube bar, or even the even the Google search engine, and I'll come up. Again, we focus pri- primarily on primitive skills, wilderness living skills, and then I also have a website that's primitivelifeways.com. That's really neat, Jeff. And uh, Jeff, I want to thank you for coming on the show, man. You take care, all right? Yeah, thanks for having me, Blake. I appreciate it. No problem. Bye, bye, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, take care. Well, I appreciate Jeff coming to the show. We're running out of time here, but uh, again, I'm Blake Allen. I'm out here with Dean Coulson. And uh, thanks, guys, for coming to the show. Be sure to check out our website, www.radioshow.art, A-R-T, of O-F and A-N, outdoorsman.com. Make sure that's man, not man. That's a common mistake, dot com. Be sure to check that out. And uh, follow us on Facebook. Uh, f- like us on uh, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and uh, follow me on Instagram to get some uh, cool outdoor uh, news and jokes and stuff like that. So guys, be sure to check out our website. Thanks guys for coming to the show, and tune in next week for our next podcast.